In September 2007, a 56 year old man underwent bilateral simultaneous LASIK for the treatment of presbyopia and hyperopia. The planned treatment was to use the Hansetone Zero Compression Microkeratome with a 160 head and the 9.5 millimeter suction ring to create flaps followed by an ablation with the MEL-80 eczema laser. During the flap creation of the first eye being treated, the non-dominant right eye, and due to continued non-compliance and squeezing of the eyelids by the patient, a suction loss occurred at 45% completion of the cut. The suction ring and microkeratome head were removed without incident. The partial flap was lifted and examined and found to be intact before being replaced. No eczema laser ablation was performed and further treatment was postponed to a later date. At the one-day post-op visit, the manifest refraction of the right eye was similar to pre-op and remained stable through three visits over a two-month period with no change in best spectacle corrective visual acuity. Similarly, there was no change in corneal topography two months post-op. An Artemis very high frequency digital ultrasound scan was then performed on the right eye to measure the thickness profile of the partial flap across the central 10 millimeter diameter of the cornea. The thickness of the majority of the flap was measured as between 120 and 150 microns. There was a localized region near the infrotemporal edge of the flap where the flap was slightly thicker with a maximum thickness of 182 microns. As the central corneal pachymetry was 601 microns and the refraction was low hyperopia, it was determined that there was ample tissue available to make a second cut under the original flap. The Visumax femtosecond laser had become available since the first treatment, so it was used to create a second flap which could be programmed with a specific thickness according to the Artemis 3D measurements. The flap thickness standard deviation of the Visumax is 7.9 microns. So to minimize the risk of the second flap crossing the interface of the existing flap, the thickness of the second flap should be programmed as two standard deviations below the existing flap. In this case, one standard deviation of 8 microns was considered to be ample depth due to the localized peripheral region of maximum thickness. The new flap was planned with a thickness of 190 microns, allowing for a wide margin under the majority of the incomplete flap. Flap creation with the Visumax is done in a spiral pattern, starting from the center and working outwards. The combination of using a curved contact application glass and corneal rather than conjunctival scleral suction means that the intraocular pressure rises no higher than 85 millimeters of mercury, allowing the patient to focus on the green Heaney fixation light throughout the procedure. This minimal corneal distortion ensures accurate 3D spot placement within the corneal stroma. The flap was completed successfully and the edges carefully defined. Dissection and lifting of the Visumax flap proceeded without incident and no tissue slivers were found. Ablation with the MEL-80 was carried out routinely and the flap was replaced. Treatment of the left eye was carried out routinely and successfully. At one day post-op, the spherical refractions were on target and binocular uncorrected visual acuity was 2012 at distance and J2 at near. Slit lamp examination confirmed that the flaps were well positioned with no tissue slivers or microfolds. An Artemis scan was performed three months later. The central thickness of the Visumax flap was found to be 196 microns. As expected, there was a wide margin between the partial flap interface and the Visumax flap interface. Post-operative visits at three months in one year confirmed that the refractions remained stable and on target of minus 150 diopters as this was the near vision eye. Most importantly, there was no loss of best spectacle corrective acuity or contrast sensitivity.